When a column is subjected to an axial load with moment about both major axis and minor axis, then we can say the column is axially loaded with biaxial moment. Here, load P will act at an eccentricity of EX from major axis and EY from minor axis. So, let us discuss one of the situation where we can find column with biaxial moment. Consider a typical building frame having 9 columns and 12 beams subjected to uniformly distributed load with the 4 meter center to center column spacing. In this, consider a corner column C1. It is connected to beam B7 and B2 along X axis and Y axis respectively. As the moment caused by both the beams are not balanced on the other side, the column C1 will be subjected to biaxial moment. Similarly, all other corner columns will also subjected to biaxial moment due to same situation. This we can also see in the bending moment diagram obtained through three-dimensional frame analysis in STAT Pro software. The factored moments MUX and MUY acting on a column section with respect to bending moment about the major axis and minor axis respectively can be resolved into a single resultant moment MU which acts about an axis inclined to the two principal axes as shown in figure B. Alternatively, the resultant eccentricity may be obtained as shown in figure C. When the column section including the reinforcement is axisymmetric with reference to the longitudinal axis, the resultant axis of the bending is also a principal axis as shown in figure D. In such situation, the case of biaxial bending simplifies into a case of uniaxial bending. Various simplified procedures for the design of biaxially loaded columns have been proposed by researchers and adopted by different design codes. Most of these simplified procedures are based on an approximation of interaction surface, which may be visualized in a three-dimensional plot of PUR, MUX, MUI. The simplified method adopted by the IS code in clause 39.6 is based on Bressler's formulation for the load contour. So, let us try to understand the complete design procedure for the column subjected to combined axial load and biaxial moment with the help of numerical example. Watch this video till the end to understand the concept visually in most simplified way. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of new videos. So let us design a corner column of size 400 mm by 400 mm with an unsupported length of 3.5 meter and effective length of 2.975 meter. The column is subjected to factored load of 1300 kN. It is also subjected to biaxial factored moment of 190 kN and 110 kN about X and Y axis respectively. The grade of concrete and steel are M25 and Fe415 respectively. The effective cover to the reinforcement is 60 mm. So, let us first find out the given column is short or slender column. As per IS456, a column member may be considered as a short when both the slenderness ratio LEX by D and LEY by B are less than 12, where LEX and LEY are the effective length in respect of major axis and minor axis respectively. Capital D is the depth and B is the width of the column. Assume same effective length in X and Y direction that is 2.975 meter. Now we get LEX by D equal to 7.43 and LEY B also equal to 7.43 as it is a square column. Here the slenderness ratio is less than 12. Hence 
This is short column. In next step, let us compute the eccentricities. First, calculate the applied eccentricities due to moments. Eccentricity due to MUX is 146 mm, while due to MUY is 84.6 mm. As per clause 25.4, all the columns shall be designed for a minimum eccentricity which is equal to unsupported length of column divided by 500 plus lateral dimensions divided by 30, subjected to a minimum of 20 mm. So let us calculate the minimum eccentricities as the column is square ex min is equal to ey min. Put all the values in mm in this formula. After solving, we get ex min and ey min equal to 20.33 mm. Here, actual eccentricities acting are more than the minimum eccentricities. Hence, we have to design the column subjected to axial load and biaxial moment. Generally, in practice, for the design of biaxially loaded columns, the size of column is known. Hence, only reinforcement that need to be calculated. One simple way of doing this is by designing the column section for uniaxial eccentricity, considering a moment of approximately 15% in excess of the resultant moment MUR. So, Consider the MUR is equal to 1.15 into under root of MUX square plus MUY square. This resultant bending moment should be considered to act with respect to the major axis if MUX is greater than or equal to MUY. Otherwise, it should be with respect to the minor axis. The reinforcement may be assumed to be distributed equally on all sides of the section. So, let us compute the resultant moment MUR. This is equal to 252 kN meter. Then, assume reinforcement is distributed equally on all faces of the section. Now, for percentage reinforcement calculation from interaction chart, use PU equal to 1300 kN and MU equal to 252 kN meter. So, let us get the parameters required for percentage steel computation from interaction chart. We have Fy equal to 415 Newton per mm square. Then value of D dash by D equal to 0.15. Pu by FCKPD equal to 0.325. And value of Mu by FCKPD square is 0.157. So, Select the appropriate chart for reinforcement on all four sides with Fy equal to 415 and D dash by D equal to 0.15. For this, we have chart number 45. The more details about the interaction charts and how to use it for the reinforcement calculation, please refer the earlier video of design of column with uniaxial moment. The link is given in the description. So, let us get the value of percentage steel from this chart. For this, in the chart, mark the MU by FCKBD square value 0.157 on the horizontal axis and draw a vertical line from it. Similarly, mark the PU by FCKBD value 0.325 on vertical axis and draw a horizontal line. Get the intersection point of these two lines. Here, the point is approximately on the P by FCK curve of 0.14. Hence, we can consider the value of P by FCK at this intersection point equal to 0.14. So, after putting the value of FCK, we get the percentage still required as 3.5. As per clause 26.5.3, the minimum longitudinal reinforcement should be 0.8% and maximum 4% of the gross cross-sectional area of the column for the practical purpose. 
Here, the calculated percentage steel satisfies the condition of minimum and maximum steel. So, get the total area of the steel required. After calculation, it is equal to 5600 mm square. Next, let us fix the number of bars to be provided as longitudinal reinforcement. Select the bar diameter as 25 mm. The cross sectional area of this bar is 490.6 mm square. Now, compute the number of bars. In column, always provide the even number of longitudinal bars. Hence, provide 12 number of 25 mm dia bars as longitudinal reinforcement. Thus, the total area of the steel provided at all the faces is 5887 mm square. In next step, check whether the reinforcement provided is sufficient or not for the safety of column under biaxial loading. For this purpose, we can use the expression given in clause 39.6. In this equation, MUX and MUY are the design moments about X and Y axis. MUX1 and MUY1 are the maximum uniaxial moment capacity about X and Y axis respectively. And alpha N is related to PU by PUZ. So, in next step, let us compute the maximum uniaxial moment capacity about X axis that is MUX1. For this, we will refer the same interaction chart number 45 which is used for the percentage steel computation in previous step. From this chart, we will calculate the MUX1 based on the value of PU by FCKBD and the ratio of percentage steel provided to FCK. We already have the value of PU by FCKBD which is 0.325. So, let us calculate the ratio of percentage steel provided to FCK. For this, we need percentage steel provided. This is equal to 3.68. Hence, after calculation, we get the ratio of percentage steel provided to FCK equal to 0.147. Next, let us compute MUX1 from interaction chart. For this, in the chart, mark the PU by FCK BD value 0.325 on the vertical axis and draw a horizontal line from it. Locate the point P provided by FCK on the above horizontal line. Draw vertical line from that point. Get the value of MU by FCK BD square at the horizontal axis. Here we get that value equal to 0.165. Now equate MU X1 by FCK BD square to MU by FCK BD square. Hence, MU X1 by FCK BD square is equal to 0.165. After putting the values of FCK, B and D in this equation, we get MU X1 equal to 264 kN meter. This is more than design moment MUX. Next, compute maximum uniaxial moment capacity about Y axis that is MUY1. For this, equate MUY1 by FCK BD square to earlier computed MU by FCK BD square. Hence, MUY1 by FCK BD square is equal to 0.165. As MUY1 is about Y axis, the value of B is equal to depth D and value of D is equal to width B. After putting the values of FCK, B and D in this equation, we get MUY1 equal to 264 kN meter. This is more than design moment MUY. After computation of MUX1 and MUY1, we need to compute PUZ and alpha N. Let us get the expression to calculate PUZ from clause 39.6. In this expression, ASC is equal to ASC provided. AC is the area of concrete which we get by subtracting provided steel from gross 
cross sectional area of column. After putting all the values and solving, we get PUZ equal to 3566 kN. Next, let us compute alpha n. As per IS code, alpha n is relative to PU by PUZ. Hence, calculate PU by PUZ, which is equal to 0 0.364. As per IS code, for the values of PU by PUZ equal to 0 0.2 to 0 0.8, the alpha n vary linearly from 1 to 2. For the values less than 0 0.2, alpha n is equal to 1. And for values greater than 0 0.8, alpha n is 2. The values of alpha n with respect to pu by puz is given in graphical format in figure 1. Here, pu by puz is lying between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. So, compute the alpha n by linear interpolation formula. After solving, we get alpha n equal to 1.273. After getting all the values required to check the column for safety under biaxial loading, substitute in the expression given in clause 39.6. After solving, we get the value equal to 0 0.986. This is less than 1. Hence, the column section with the provided reinforcement is safe under applied loading. In next step, let us compute the diameter and spacing of the lateral ties. As per IS code, the diameter of the lateral ties shall not less than one fourth of the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar and in no case less than 6 mm. Here, only 25 mm bar diameter is used for, for longitudinal steel. Hence, the one fourth value of dia is 6.25 mm. Therefore, use the 8 mm dia bar for lateral ties. Next, the spacing of the ties shall not be more than the least of the following. First, the least lateral dimension. Second, 16 times the smallest diameter of the longitudinal bar. And third, 300 mm. Here, first least lateral dimension is 400 mm, second 16 times smallest dia of longitudinal bar is 400 mm. So, provide the spacing of ties equal to least of the three values that is 300 mm. Hence, provide 8 mm dia bar as a lateral ties at 300 mm center to center. Finally, let us summarize the design and the reinforcement detailing. A corner column of size 400 mm by 400 mm subjected to axial load with biaxial moment is designed with M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. 12 number of 25 mm dia bars are provided as longitudinal reinforcement, while 8 mm dia lateral ties are provided at spacing 300 mm center to center. If you like this video, then share your thoughts in comment section. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of such interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.